I will talk about boycott then, shall I? <laughs> I'm the only bloke he talks to, you know. He hasn't got a friend in the world. I'm the only one he talks to. And I think he's been home, he came back home because he's been having, he's had a little bit of trouble. <laughs> and he came back from the way, he went out to the West Indies, then he came back and he's, because he don't live far of me, he's been home, but now I think he's just gone back now. But I've told him, I said, Geoffrey, every time I see him, because he's the biggest miser I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and every time I see him, I said, Geoffrey, you cannot take your money with you. But he will. <laughs> He'll make sure he gets it in that coffin when they bury him. And I've told him, I hope I'm still around, because that's dig it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, of all the great players I've seen, if I had to pick a batsman to bat for my life, I'd go for boycott to bat for my life. He never had the natural ability or the natural flair of a Vivian Richards, a Greg Chapel, a Barry Richards, a Sunil Gavaska, Graham Pollock, people like this Greg Chapel. He never had their natural ability and natural flair. He was probably the best self-made player there's ever been in the history of the game, self-made. I started my career at Barnsley Cricket Club and I went with a chap called Michael Parkinson. You've heard of him, haven't you? <laughs> And we were both kids together at Barnsley Cricket Club. And we had this young schoolboy who batted at number six for us called Geoffrey Boycott, number six. And I remember one night we finished practising and Jeff was only, only 14. And we were sat on the boundary edge, Parkinson, myself and Boycott. And we were just talking, we were only kids. And Boycott said to Mike Parkinson and myself, he said, by the time I am 23, I shall have the full white rows of Yorkshire on my cap and I shall have the three lions of England on my chest. And by God, he did it. I've never met anyone like him for application, dedication, concentration, and believing in himself, and also mentally strong. You can have all the ability in the world, whatever walk of life you're in, whatever job you're in, if you're not mentally strong there and believe in yourself, you fall by the wayside. And this was boycott strength. He was very, very strong there. There have been times in test matches when I've been umpire and he's been batting and he's been there, you know. And I've had to say to myself many a time, you know, I've, come on, get a grip of yourself. Come on, Dickie, get a grip. Don't let him put you to sleep. Come on, Dolly. <laughs> But he had one bad habit at Boycock. He, he run people out, didn't he? <laughs> me included. <laughs> he once run me out playing for Barnsley. They had about the biggest collection they've ever had at Barnsley Cricket Club. I was 49. There were 3,000 people in the ground. And I hit this ball to deep mid-wicket. And I says, come to. I run down the pitch. He said, keep running into the pavilion. 